Hello again, everyone. Edwin Leonard back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about astrology and uh, the first house. Now, the first house in astrology, as far as what it rules, it's, it's connected with the physical body, uh, the vitality, the energy, uh, the first impression uh, one may make on someone, uh, one's outlook, uh, their outlook on life. It could also be new beginnings and and a grandmother, and also uh, the early childhood, the outer uh, demeanor of the person, what you're able to uh, project, the qualities you can project uh, naturally to others. It's uh, for the rising sign is the first house, and it's often referred to as an astrological mask or the facade, that projection of yourself, true self being the sun, projection of self being uh, the ascendant first house cusp. And now, it's important, of course, uh, when you look at uh, the first house in astrology, you look at the, the sign on the cusp of the house is very important, obviously. And uh, like in my case, I have a Taurus ascendant, so Taurus does fall on my first house cusp. It can be, uh, I mean, the first, it's the physical body, and I mean, people with Taurus rising often have a, a stout, short, generally between short and middle height, a stocky build dark hair, I mean, full features, uh, the thing is, and also, uh, you're talking about, um, and it's the first impression that I can give to others, so, uh, given that Taurus is on the first house cusp, I might come across as very placid, calm, on a first impression, show a lot of stolidness, and just a lot of composure, and very, and really not, obviously, overly, uh, animated, and, the thing too is and also can reflect a um, a grandmother as well as I stated before interestingly enough my my father's um, it could be the, the generally the, the dominant what it is it's a dominant it's supposed to reflect the dominant parents uh, mother which is a grandmother and my uh, father's uh, mother was a son in Taurus uh, interest, interestingly enough ironically enough and I have Taurus on uh, the first house uh, cusp and having a sign on the ascendant will also can indicate what possible uh, health related matters debilitations you may have associated with the sign because it's associated with the physical body so I have to be careful with matters with the throat the neck cough colds uh, the thyroid gland anything that could be Taurus uh, related so and generally, since it's the vitality and energy level, it's more, I mean, Taurus rising can be very strongly connected with latent energy and very good uh, powers of endurance. Now, it's also important to look at and see if there's any planets that either conjunct and or are in the uh, first house because that could flavor uh, that energy, that first house energy. Now. I have uh, the moon in Gem, for example, like with me, I have the moon in Gemini in the first house and Saturn conjunct the ascendant from the twelfth house. Now, uh, as far as moon in Gemini in the first house, that's a lot of people will will see some Gemini characteristics on a first impression and. Uh, I mean that is, remember that the moon is one of I mean it's really it's one of the three main proponents in, in your astrology chart the ascendant sun and moon and even if they're uh, and the thing about I mean these are uh, the moon is uh, reactionary it's responsive and uh, Having the, the moon in Gemini in the first house, people can see a, a lot of, uh, you could say sometimes very long-winded responses, rambling <laughs> responses on a first uh, impression. It is very, of course, Gemini is very loquacious energy. Having Saturn conjunct my ascendant from the 12th house uh, could indicate, I mean, I had one friend tell me that he saw that I was very private, introverted, right? You know, right away when he came over to my, to my home. People can see that I'm often, you know, often about solitude and seclusion on a first impression. That I might have trouble letting people into my life. Saturn on the ascendant can also make the personality somewhat uh, very introverted and inhibited. People can see that on a first uh, impression. Saturn in the twelfth house may have difficulty letting others in their life. The fact that it conjuncts the ascendant, people can see this when they first say me. Now, another thing uh, to look at 
is um, looking at the aspects um, to the ascendant can be uh, important as well okay, because when you're talking about aspects in astrology you're talking about relationships from planetary energy to the ascendant in, the, in this example and in this relationship to, uh, to astrological energies and interaction with them and whether they work well together or adversely of course a lot of that I mean that is predicated on the kind of aspects there are sextiles and trines could work very auspiciously conjunctions are intensifying and we are talking about uh, squares and oppositions can be um, can be adverse uh, in conjuncts may be as well in conjuncts may be seen as neutral but they can have I could see them as being adverse because they do require adjustments now like in my uh, in my uh, chart for example I mean I have uh, the M Venus in Leo making a square to my Taurus ascendant and the Venus and um, well, you're talking about very I mean it's strong conflicting energy by sign but what it could basically mean is and regardless of the signs the fact that Venus is square in my Senate might be hard for me to project feelings and sentiments uh, outwardly and then you're talking about very Leo very loud boisterous energy uh, demonstrative feelings perhaps and and also Venus and Leo may surprisingly uh, become sad and, and, and hurt by others quicker than a lot of people think because of the ego that it can be connected with the sign and the fact that Venus is in Venus is about our sentiments and feelings but it may be hard for me to show that um, to people and, and given that I do have a rather I mean you're talking about Taurus rising being very placid very stolid it's very hard to project uh, that energy uh, and also Venus and being in Leo I mean wherever Leo is it's not going to act in a very quiet manner so you understand what I'm saying about how Venus and Leo might actually be very demonstrative they might have very they might uh, it might not take much for them to get their feelings hurt because they might be feel demeaned even if someone might just simply disagree with them on, on a certain subject and, and try to and, and do what they can to prove them wrong and they might take it more to the Leo heart than than you would think but anyway it's also important to look at um, also the ruler uh, of the first house is important as well because that can show where your that sector of life where your ascendant energy is injected into prominently now my uh, my chart is also called the chart ruler my ruler of my first house is in my fourth house in my natal chart so a lot of my Taurus rising energy may be injected into home related matters people I feel close to home with uh, safety and security emotional security it could be planning for that uh, matters with that latter or the end uh, part of life and and even uh, the mother in some cases I mean for you know, people that have this uh, that have the ruler of the first in their uh, in their fourth house and that is where a lot of and the people that I'm close to home with may see those stronger sometimes even obstinate Taurus rising qualities more so than others and people that are more connected with my home life because the ruler of the first house falls in my fourth house in my natal chart and that is where a lot of that Taurus rising energy is injected and deposited into now another thing too is that um, also looking uh, it's important to look at transits that aspect the first house because they could be significant and uh, and they could have a you know, positive or negative effect and depending on what kind of aspects they are or if you have train or transits that come to your house I should say can be significant because that could have some impact on matters with the first house at the time of the transit now back in 1989 I had transit Jupiter uh, in my first house for at least close to half the year at that time and I had been putting on a good amount of weight at that time I mean you're talking about because it was Ju because Jupiter was transiting Taurus and Gemini at that time Jupiter transiting Taurus of course that could indicate I mean, being in the, my first house being very indulgent and indulgent in very sweet um, or maybe rich sweet foods and uh, and the fact that it was going into Gemini for part of the time too is that that could have manifested in really um, 
possible obesity even in really indulging in, in just a variety of foods that might have been causing some weight issues at that time uh, as well. And the thing too is it's also uh, in the astrology, it's important to look at as far as the first house goes, look at uh, progressions that involve the ascendant as they could uh, they, they could have some impact on you uh, as well in matters that are associated uh, with um, with the first as far as the first house energy goes now it's interesting like with me I mean I noticed when my uh, my progressed descendant entered the zodiac sign cancer it seemed like I was you know really moving a lot from one place to another I had all you know, a lot of living instability and still do perhaps I mean a lot of that too is connected with the fact that I got Pluto and Uranus in my fourth house in my uh, in my progress chart as well so with Uranus there especially that's a lot of erratic and sporadic energy in one's home life and the thing too is when you have like say somebody has their uh, progress Taurus ascendant transition into Gemini by uh, progression well at that point in time the person with Taurus ascendant I mean they're not going to change their you know their features or looks or anything but they might uh, take on a little bit more Gemini energy outwardly be more loquacious be more diversified have more uh, might have more interest in various subjects might want to do things more that require dexterity outwardly such as auto or refrigeration uh, mechanics things uh, just things uh, like that I mean progressions can have uh, more of an uh, more of an impact on uh, you know I mean not I should say they do have certain impact on others though it's more I mean, difference mainly between progressions and uh, transits. That transits are more often spontaneous energy. They may, they're, they're, it's a little more inclined toward unplanned energy. But the progressions are more, uh, more connected uh, with more planned energy. That's more, uh, a little bit more premeditated in contrast to, uh, in, in contrast to uh, transits. Now, and the thing is, uh, in any way, this really. Um, that's really pretty much it as far as what I wanted to get at as far as astrology and uh, the first house goes. Well, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Until next time, people, Eklund learns saying stay well.